So after Thanksgiving, the weather stayed below freezing for several days. We accidentally left the water hydrant on in the barnyard and we froze it up. Uh, the Jersey heifers, they've learned how to open up one of the gates in the barnyard and just let themselves out the pasture so they know how to break out now. And then the pigs, we were able to load them up and haul them off to the processor. So luckily today it's warmer, everything's thawed out. We've got several things we need to winterize before it gets cold again. We need to secure the barnyard so they can't break out. And we got to clean up after the pigs. So let's get to it. So besides freezing up one of the water hydrants, we froze up the hose too, and it just snapped. I mean, it's barely connected by a thread. There we go, it's completely off now. So you can tell that this garden hose has been repaired before because it's got a splice here on the end. And um, I might as well just go ahead and try to use this through the winter time because if there's any chance of freezing up a hose, I might as well just keep breaking this one. Oh. So this water trough has a heater on the inside. I just need to get it closer to an outlet. Oh, the barnyard definitely turns into like a muddy soup this time of year. So you can see down the water trough we've got I think it's a 1500 watt heating element that should kick on when it gets close to freezing to keep the water warm. Trouble is this 100 gallon tank is too tall for the sheep. So then I've got a 40 gallon tank. Ooh, my hands look nice and dirty. Um, I've got a 40 gallon tank for the sheep and I'm gonna have to figure out how to keep that one from freezing. Well, this ain't ideal. I really need a dedicated outlet out here, but this will do for now. All right, that heating element is hooked up, so this one shouldn't freeze now. Now I'll show you what I've bought for this small one. This is a submersible de-icer. You just drop it to the bottom of your tank, and then you take your cord out the top of the tank. You plug it in, and this is supposed to kick on and off as it gets cold. And this is, this is 500 watts. It says it's designed for for up to 50 gallon stock tanks. That's a 40 gallon, I'm pretty sure that's 40 gallons. So hopefully this will work, keeping it thawed out for the sheep and we won't have to be breaking ice multiple times a day. Well, you walk away for a couple minutes and you make a muddy situation even worse. So I'm just gonna drop this in the bottom of the tank and then run the cord back behind and under the fence and then hopefully they won't mess with it. Hopefully. And according to the box, this is safe to use in plastic. So it should be fine in these water troughs. So I ran the extension cords in here in the barn. Each one is plugged into a GFCI outlet. And um, I think the problem is, I think they're both on the same circuit. So 1500 watts, and 500 watts, that's 2,000 watts. And uh, I believe it's a 20 amp circuit, so we're getting pretty close to the maximum on that circuit. So we'll just have to wait and see how it runs. If it doesn't work, I have another circuit, I think in the chicken coop. I think it's actually different. I might be able to plug it in in there. Well, after further review, I only have one outlet circuit down here in the bottom of the barn. So that is definitely something that will need to be addressed. Start running these heaters. You really need them all to be probably on a separate circuit. So during the winter time, I want the heifers and the sheep to be locked in here so they can just eat hay all winter. I will give them access to this little back area right here just so they have a little bit more space, but they're not supposed to be going out to that pasture and they have learned how to open this gate up. And you'll be able to see why. Look at that, it's just a hook and a latch and all it does is it takes the cow to come up or the heifer and hit that with her nose and then she's out to pasture. Look out chicken, look out chicken. Oh man, almost crushed a chicken. You okay? Never gonna trust me again. So I do plan on replacing this gate later. It'll be bigger. It'll go all the way down to this corner post and I'll probably make this a whole different latch system then. But for today, I think I can just put it on the other side and then hopefully she can't reach her nose through here and open it up. I think this is narrow enough. She won't be able to do it. Wouldn't you know, just my luck. First thing I do is drop them in the mud. 
or something similar to mud. Is it just me or are those really been out of shape? I'm about to straighten these. Oops. Hey, look at that. It's actually flat now. Oh, man. And I dropped him again. Man, let's see if I can do it a third time. Now it's dirty on both sides. So I know some people are gonna give me crap for using this cheesy latch. And the only reason I'm using it is because the gap is so big. This is the only latch I have that will reach. All right, well, we'll see if that ends up holding. I kind of got a feeling she'll still be able to open it. I'm gonna have to find some other latch. All right, hopefully that's something they can't unlatch. All right, better hit this with some WD-40. Keep it from rusting. All right, I think we're done in the barnyard. Now it's time to go over to the pig pen and see if we can clean it up. Let's see if we can get their feed trough out of here. Oh. Well, I need to see if I can empty their water barrel. So on, so on the inside of here, there is a, a float. Oh man, this thing's heavy. There's a float on the inside of here that keeps the water full. And uh, I gotta get the garden hose off of it. Oh. Oh. Just leave that, just leave that upside down for the winter. It should be fine. So these are the loading ramps that I found on the property. And you can see it was laying in the dirt for so long. It has some termite damage here on the bottom. Overall, it's in pretty good shape. I just want to store this inside so it doesn't get any worse. All right, now it's time for the worst part of this cleanup. So we've fed our four pigs out of the inside of this trailer for like the last three weeks. And it is filthy. It's full of feed and everything else you can imagine. So it is ready to be cleaned out. I do not like to leave these dirty. I like to clean them. I like to clean this trailer out after every use. So let's go. Uh, we're going to have to hitch it up to the truck, haul it over somewhere else and get to cleaning. Right, the trailer's all cleaned out. It's not perfect, but it looks pretty good. I did end up getting the weights of the pigs. Um, I think our biggest pigs we ever raised, we had one that weighed in over 400 pounds. I can't remember if it was like 420, 440. It was a big pig. And this year, our biggest pig was right at 400 pounds. So that's the second biggest pig we've ever raised. The next pig under that was 380. Then it was 370, and our smallest pig was 340 pounds. And I was shooting for 300, and um, so I definitely went over quite a bit. Now the reason for that is because with the butcher, you estimate a date, you have to, you have to schedule it 
you know, like six months in advance. So you schedule that date and you're hoping they're gonna be at the right weight when it happens. And in this case, last year we went too short and they were smaller than what I wanted. This year I went too long and they were way bigger. So I probably have to go back and look at our records, but I'm pretty sure I bought 4,000 pounds of feed and then I had a few hundred pounds left over from last year. So I had somewhere around 1,100 pounds, maybe a feed for each pig. And then we went and bought more feed because we ran out. And then I fed them a bunch of steer feed. So I went back and I looked at the receipts and it looks like, I think I bought pig feed a total of three times. And um, it ended up being, I think about 5,100 pounds worth of pig feed. And then I probably fed them another 500 pounds of the steer feed we had left over. So that's about 5,600 pounds, 1,400 pounds for each pig. Um, so I don't think I normally feed that much. I think I normally feed somewhere to 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. So we definitely, definitely, you know, fed them more and they were a lot bigger pig this year. Well, these girls are getting a little impatient. I've had them over in this other pasture today while I was working on the barnyard. So I think it's time to go ahead and get them moved back over. All right, we got our white rope set up to simulate electric wire so they don't cross it. All right, Maya. You guys are ready to go back, aren't you? Yes, you are. All right, the animals are back in the barnyard. And with the chickens we got, it's always a mystery where the eggs are. And we, got, we finally found them. It's a huge pile of eggs. This happens like I don't know. Every month and a half, we find a huge pile of eggs. So we're gonna go grab them. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see this. Let me get my flashlight out. You can see all the eggs laying underneath the back end of the square baler. Well, there ended up being 29 eggs under there. And there's at least four or five that are cracked because they froze last week. And maybe some of the others are bad too, so. Anyway, we'll probably float some of them. We'll probably just throw some of them out. I meant to feed them to the pigs last week before they left to go to the butcher, like one last treat before they were off for their last day. And uh, I forgot to. All right, before I end this video, I'm gonna head back to the workshop. I wanna show you the Alice Chalmers. I did get a little bit done on it and I found a little bit more work that I think I need to do. So I did end up getting the right side axle and final drive put together and on the Alice Chalmers D17. And now it's the point in time where I need to clean from the transmission back so that I can try to paint this back half. But what I found out, I think there's actually more that I need to take off of the tractor that I, that's really dirty. I've been scraping on it with a putty knife, but I just think I'm just gonna have to take it all off. So underneath the transmission, the snap coupler attachment was right here. It pinned between this pin and this pin, and that's where the snap coupler was. And it has this whole underbelly that goes with that, and it's under the transmission. It's full of grime, it's all greasy, very dirty back in there. And I need to get this clean, I think from like right here back. And to do that, I'm gonna have to just go ahead and take this off as well, and I'll probably just clean that up and paint it while I'm at it. So I have made a little bit of progress with the Alice Chalmers. I've got a little bit more to go here, and I'm hoping in a couple weeks we'll be finally to the point of maybe trying to paint the back half of this tractor. I've actually spent several evenings out here working. Get home from work, eat supper, come out here, clean parts, put stuff together till about 8.30 at night. I think I had one or two days that were like rainy, gloomy days. I just came in here in the workshop and worked on the tractor for the whole day. So I've put probably another 20 hours or so in this tractor. Um, you really can't tell it. I mean, no, there's not much to show for it except for the axle hanging off on that side. But I have been putting in a lot of time. I had a, a bunch of dirty parts still, and I've been putting them off. I'm finally getting to the point of like getting all these parts all cleaned up. So I spent a lot of time on it, and hopefully soon you guys will see some transformation or at least see a difference in the tractor um, here in the next few weeks. So today was the first day I've been able to get outside and, and do something on camera for like the last week. With the holidays, Thanksgiving and everything, we've been pretty busy. And today was just a miserable day. It rained all night last night and it rained this morning. We needed the rain, I'm not complaining. Um, 
So this morning I just left. I went and I did a material run. I, I went and got some posts. I got some boards. I got a, a few gates to, to continue on the corral build. So I got a whole trailer full of stuff so I can continue building the corral that we're working on. And then I started doing chores like after lunch this morning or after lunch today. And it was just, everything was just muddy, miserable outside. Just a terrible day to try to get anything done. And I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, just like normal. I've got a list a mile long. I think there was probably at least two or three other things I was wanting to get done today and I didn't. And one of those is the Case tractor, the, the Case 730 tractor. It's got a heavy weight oil, or it's got a 30 weight, straight 30 weight oil. And it gets thick like molasses when it gets cold and it does not want to start. So I was hoping to, on a warm day like today to get it started, get it in the workshop, change the oil. I bought. Um, so I think it's 15 W40 to put in it. Um, and I want to try to get the oil changed in the case tractor. Hopefully it will start better in the winter time and maybe I, I get it to where I could use it. I was hoping to get that done today um, and didn't quite get that far. Didn't have enough hours in the day, you know, to get done what I wanted. But that's typical. That's, there's always more to do than there is time. But I think that's going to be it for today's video, guys. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.